In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use our smart detection rolls with a compatible NVR and a camera that supports these smart detection features. So first, I'm going to right-click. I'm going to click the main menu. It's going to ask me to log into my NVR. All right, now I'm logged in. I'm going to go in the AI portion of my NVR to get to the smart detection rules. Here we can see there's smart search at the top. This is if you already have rules set up and you want to search for recorded video. And then down here we can see parameters. Now this is where you set up your parameters for your smart detection. Under smart plan, you're going to first want to come into smart plan and for each channel that you have a smart detection camera on, you're going to want to first enable the IVS function for that camera. So we're going to enable IVS. It's the light bulb on the right hand side. We want it to be blue so it's enabled and then we're going to click the apply button in the bottom right. That's going to enable our camera to use the IVS smart plan and that's going to enable the IVS. If your camera has face detection you can try playing around with the face detection settings by enabling it here and then clicking face detection. However please note you can only have one of these enabled at any given moment. So since this video is about smart detection we'll leave the IVS rule enabled here and then we'll click the IVS tab. IVS also stands for smart detection. Here we can see we have channel 1 selected, it's the only camera we have connected to our NVR, and it does support the IVS function as we proved by starting our smart plan. Here we can see this camera has no rules drawn for it. So we're going to come down here to the right hand side to add a rule to our camera here. So here you can see it's add, added a rule, this rule is enabled, the rule has a name of rule 1, the rule type is a trip wire, here we can see there is trip wire, intrusion, abandoned object detection, and missing object detection. So, for this example, we're just going to draw a tripwire rule to begin with here. So we come over here to the draw section. Here we can see that we can name the rule if we would like to, and then we can tell the rule to trigger on a given direction of the tripwire being crossed. For this particular rule, I care about everyone and anyone who is coming from the right-hand side of my view on the right hand side here. So I'm going to click and then drag and draw a tripwire detection rule over here on the right hand side. Now I don't really care about this bush but I do care about if anyone is walking on the street or coming into my parking lot here. So I've clicked and ended my tripwire rule. I can then keep making more tripwires by clicking or I can right click to get out of my rule here and it's going to create a rule. Now when anything crosses through either side of my rule here, it's going to trigger the rule. So I can click OK after my rule is drawn. If you want to delete your rule, you would come up here and click Clear. And then the target filter allows you to change the overall target that your camera is looking at by dragging and dropping. So if you don't really care about anything on the other side of this camera, you would of course move your detection zone over here so that none of your IVS rules trigger over here. But we're going to drag this back to the full screen. And again, that is on the left hand side and it's called the target filter. All right, so now we've gotten rid of our target filter here and we're going to redraw our rule. We're going to right click. And then we're going to click OK to save our rule. All right, next is the trigger portion. So we're going to click the gear icon under the trigger column. And here we can see that we can set up the time that we want this rule to be active. We can tell it to use one of the alarm outputs on our NVR. We can tell it to record another channel if we wanted to. It's usually going to be set to record itself, of course. If it's a PTZ, we can tell a PTZ or if you have a PTZ connected to your system, you can tell a PTZ to uh, run a certain preset to or a pattern whenever your rule triggers. You can also have your NVR tour to the channel that has been activated. Or if, if you had multiple channels, you could tell it to pull up multiple channels. Now all this tour means is it's going to pull that channel up into full screen or whatever grid view screen it can whenever this rule has been triggered. You can have it your NVR buzz. Now it's just going to buzz in the vicinity of the NVR. If you're not close to your NVR, you don't necessarily need it to buzz. It's mainly for active surveillance. You're of course going to want it to log that. We can have it also send an email or upload our alarm. 
And then the latch setting is the pre-record of the event. And then post-record is how long it records after the event has been detected and there's no longer motion being detected around that trigger. So we're just going to leave these settings as default and click the back button. Now we can also draw an intrusion detection rule. So we're going to click the add button at the bottom right. It's going to pull up another rule here. Under the rule type, we can click and then we can click on the intrusion detection rule. We can draw our intrusion detection. Now the difference between intrusion detection and tripwire detection is intrusion detection allows you to draw a box or a line. And then you can have this be a cross. If they cross, if they enter this intrusion detection zone, if they exit this intrusion detection zone, or if they exit or enter the intrusion detection zone. Or you can have it set up to, if something appears within the um, intrusion detection rule, you can also have it trigger, trigger based on that. So we're just going to click OK. That rule looks good to me. That's if anyone comes near the Audi vehicle there. So we'll click OK. Now we have an intrusion detection if anybody comes near the vehicle there. And we have a tripwire intrusion, we have a tripwire rule if anyone comes in frame or out of frame on the right hand side of our camera. Now we can add a third rule. Now this third rule could be an abandoned object or missing object detection. So we don't really have anything in view that we really care about as far as missing or abandoned objects. Uh, these cars are going to move throughout the day. Uh, so we don't really want a rule looking at these particular v uh, objects because they're of course going to trigger and they will trigger our other rules when they move probably. But uh, this abandoned object detection and missing object detection are more so for airports, uh, laundromats, uh, where objects are going to be stationary and if they move uh, then we don't want them to move. And then abandoned objects of course, um, you know, train stations, air airports, uh, places where items can be left. If they're left there for a certain amount of time, you can of course have this rule alert you that something was left there. Uh, let's say we had some baggage or something in here in this area uh, that we didn't, we, kn we knew we didn't want anything left in this area, then we would make a rule here and if anything was left, then we would of course be able to uh, make a trigger for that and send like an email alert to our, our um, security team or something like that to go retrieve that uh, piece of luggage. But uh, since we have our two rules here, we that's all we really care about. We're going to click apply. It's just going to save those two rules for us. And that's how we set up our two uh, rules for tripwire and intrusion detection. Now we're going to want to make sure that our camera is set up to record those events. Although it is set up under the trigger to record those channels, we want to make sure that it's also scheduled to record those events. So we're just going to right click or click cancel on the bottom right here. It's going to bring us back to our main menu. In order to make sure that these are actually recording under a schedule, we're going to click the storage button at the bottom of our NVR here. It's going to bring us to our recording schedule. Here we can see it. We have it set to um, a continuous recording 24-7. Now that can be really difficult to find our, our whenever anything happens, but we still want to record continuously. In this particular example, there's a whole lot of different recording methods that you can do. Um, but in this one, we just want to be, we want to record continuously, and then we also want to know when an IBS alert happens. So we're going to go ahead and click and drag across here. And now keep in mind, I've only selected IBS at the top here. And we can click and drag on Sunday, and it's going to create that recording schedule for Sunday. We could, of course, click Apply. Uh, there's a whole lot of different ways you can do this. Again, we could select all here and do this for all the days during the week. And again, we cover recording methods in a different um, guide, but of course, if you want to have these IVS rules detected and recording 24-7, this is what your um, recording schedule might look like. Of course, you could reduce this uh, for when you're only open, you know, between 8 and eight and 6. Or you could have those rules be disabled during business hours because you know people are going to be in there and you don't want them to record. And then you would, of course, do this, you know, between your closing hours and when you open. And then you would have it look like that. And then we're going to right click to back out of our storage schedule. And now we know we have our rules enabled. We have our schedule set up. We have our trigger set up. And it's going to record whenever one of these events actually triggers. And then we're going to right click back out of here. And you can see our rules here on our camera channel. I've just double clicked on that channel to pull this up. And you can see our IBS rules 
listed here. Now, if you were in live view and anyone were to come through, as you can see, this car is intruded into my intrusion detection box. It's actually picking that car up and putting a green rectangle around it. It's detect a little bit of that vehicle, and it will detect these vehicles as they come by. Now, the, the tricky part is here, since I have two rules near each other, sometimes the other rule on the other side here will not trigger. Now, this is a case of having too many rules or having the rules too close to one another, and you'll see that this tripwire is not actually going to trigger because this intrusion detection rule is too close to it, and the camera can't pick up both of those actions happening at the same time. And you can see there where it picked up that van coming through the intrusion detection box and this car appearing inside of that intrusion detection box rather than the cars passing through that tripwire. So it's always important to make sure your rules are not going to interfere with one another. Otherwise, there's no point in having that rule set up. So we're just going to right-click and go back to main menu. Now we're going to show how we can pull back and play back some of these IBS rules. So we're going to go to playback here on the top left-hand side. And now at the bottom, you can see where you can search for these different things. Here we have it set to search for regular alarm and motion. Now if I just wanted to search for my IBS rules or smart detection rule having been triggered, I'm going to, of course, going to uncheck the regular I'm going to uncheck alarm, I'm going to uncheck motion, and here you can see there's a slight little sliver of these smart detection rules that we just had trigger on our live view. So we can either click on that rule right there and that tiny little sliver, we can try to click with our mouse, or we can come down here to the bottom and do the one hour or 30 minute increments. As you can see, it, it took a little bit to pull up the recorded video, but we pulled it up. We can see our IVS rules here. And I'm just going to click on the half an hour to zoom in here. We can see we have actually a couple different ones going on here. And when you first get to your recorded smart detection rule, you're going to see what triggered that smart detection rule. And then you're going to get your post record after that rule was, of course, detected. So hopefully this video helps you understand more about setting up smart detection rules, setting up your recording schedule for smart detection, and then learning how to play back the smart recorded smart detection triggered video. Thank you for watching.